So now that we've given an overview of the overall architecture of the Flight's Reactive Microservices app, I'm going to start looking in more detail at how this app's app gateway and microservices are implemented using reactive programming. And this is should be very interesting. So if you recall, we had the flight controller and the flight controller was basically used as kind of the adapter that takes the HTTP requests and then maps them to method calls on our flight service. So here is our flight service. And the flight service is really where a lot of the fun happens. There's, there's other stuff that happens in other microservices or other services that are used as microservices, but uh, the flight service does a lot of the heavy lifting. And it has a bunch of methods that can be used to find all the available flights, find the best price, given a flight request, get a list of airports and find departure dates for a given pair of airports. And let's take a look and see how this works. So the flight service is a discovery client and that's used, as we'll see shortly, to find all the registered microservices. And then we also have another important field that's auto-wired called a web client. And a web client is a mechanism that's baked into uh, the web, WebFlux framework, WebFlux platform. And it can be used to make requests that take advantage of the Project Reactor reactive types like mono and flux. So you can see it's it's sort of like REST template, if you remember what we used for the, the flights microservices example earlier. However, in this case, it's going to be used instead with the, uh, the mono and flux type. So it gives you the asynchrony stuff we talked about. And then we have something here called a, a base URL. This is used for all the redirections and you can also use this as a way to mock backend servers for testing. So let's take a look and see how this actually works. And this may answer some of the questions people had asked earlier about how the how this looks from a client point of view. So keep in mind that, that the flights service is a server from the point of view of the client, but it's also a client from the point of view of other microservices that it wants to talk to. So this will give you kind of a flavor of, of what a regular client would look like. So here we're gonna take a look at the get airports method. Now, at this point, you can see we're, we're in the world of Java and reactive streams. We're no longer really seeing HTTP stuff, at least at this point. Well, we'll see a bit of it in a second, but, but we're looking at things that are no longer annotated with things like get request or post request or so on. So here we're going to go ahead and say mono dot from callable. And what this does is this goes ahead and builds a mono. And what the mono is going to do is it's going to go ahead and send a get request to the airport's microservice. And then it'll call the retrieve method. And this particular call is going to then block, or that block is the wrong word, because it's, it's just gonna go over and send the request over there. And what it's gonna get back is going to be a flux to an airport, a flux that emits a bunch of airport objects. And so this is how you invoke calls in a reactive environment using web flux mechanisms. So web client.get.uri.retrieve body to flux. That basically says what comes back from this is going to be a flux of airport objects that will be emitted. And then we go ahead and we say to this, this thing, run that computation, the from callable computation run that computation in the background on a thread from the parallel thread pool. So all of this stuff is gonna take place off the calling thread. It's gonna run in a background thread. And what it's gonna return when it's done will be a mono, because that's what from callable gives back. It's gonna return a mono to a flux of airports. It'll return a mono to something that emits airport objects. And so what we use here is we use the project reactor mono flat map many operator. And what flat map many does is it essentially unwraps or denests the mono and it returns back a flux of the airport objects. And this is a very important idiom to understand with project reactor. So 
we get back a mono to a flux of airport objects, and we use flat map many to go in and grab the payload, which is the flux of airport objects, and return that as the result of get airports. So that's basically how the call looks. So this, this is kind of looking the way the client would look, right? If you were to look at the client side, it would look something like this. Of course, you could dress it up by using retrofit and other mechanisms so that you wouldn't see these calls, but it's essentially what's happening under the hood by various adapters that could be used by retrofit on say an Android client. So that's making an asynchronous call. And it's, you can see it's also using the Eureka service to redirect that to the appropriate microservice that handles the airport's operation. Let's now go down here and take a look at another example. This is called find departure dates. And this is also very interesting. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a little helper method called get airline services. And what get airline services is gonna do is it's going to get a flux that contains all the register, registered airline microservices that have been auto-registered with the discovery service, with the Eureka discovery service. So let's go take a look at how get airline services work. So get airline services goes ahead and calls the get services method on the discovery client. And it uses from iterable. And what that does is that converts the list of microservices of all the microservices that are registered at this point. It returns that list and it converts it into a flux. So it's now gonna be an asynchronous type. Remember from call it from iterable is a factory method operator that will convert the list into a flux. And then we're gonna use the filter suppressing operator or filtering operator, depends on what you wanna call it. And it's what it does is it's only going to emit the microservices who have the name airline in their name, the, the suffix airline in their name. So it's only gonna return the microservices that are registered for American Airlines and Southwest Airlines. So that comes back as a flux of strings. And then we take that flux of strings, these are the airlines, and then we go ahead and we use the flat map concurrency idiom, which we've talked about in the videos and you'll learn more about, we briefly talked about a couple of times. This is gonna go ahead and in parallel, find all the airline departure dates. And we'll see that find airline departure dates is a helper method that's going to take the departure airport, the arrival airport, and the airline, and go ahead and look these up. So here you can see that we're gonna go ahead and call this helper method. This does something very similar to what we saw before. This is now a client for a given airline microservice. So what it's gonna do here is it's going to go ahead and use the from callable factory method on a mono to make a web get request, HTTP web request, that will go to the base URL plus the airline. So now it's gonna go look up and find that airline and it'll pass in the departure airport and the arrival airport and so on. It's then going to retrieve the response from the microservice, convert this back to a local date object because that's what's gonna be returned by that particular airline microservice. And it's gonna to arrange to run this call in the background on the parallel scheduler. So it's off the calling thread again. So it's running asynchronously. And when we get done with this, we'll have a mono to a flux of flights that map the departure airport and the arrival airport. And then we're gonna go ahead and unwrap that mono and return the flux of flights. So that's going to go ahead and return us a flux of local dates. So that's what find airline departure date does. That makes calls and you can see that all those calls are gonna run in parallel. So we're gonna go out and query all the backend databases in parallel and they're gonna return the results. We're going to flat map many of them together. So we'll end up with the flux of all the flights for that particular airline. And then if you take a look over here, you'll see that we use flat map. And what flat map is going to do is it's going to take back the fluxes of flights from each airline microservice and merge them together into a consolidated flux of all the departure dates from all the airlines. And all of those things take place asynchronously. And of course, 
this is returned right away back to the client as a flux. And so as those values are omitted, then that will come back to the client, which in this case is the, the real client, the, the mobile app, for example, or the web browser. And uh, then that can start to display them as they come back. You don't have to sit there and wait for them all to finish. So, um, so that was basically find departure dates. Let's now go ahead down here and take a look at find flights. So find flights is a really interesting method that's going to do two things in parallel. So this once again is demonstrating the power of using reactive programming. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go out and find the rates of the currency we're trying to convert to. And that's, as we'll see, gonna go ahead and call to the exchange rate microservice. And then we're gonna collect all the rates up into a map. And this map is going to be a map of, that's got the key being the currency, like dollars or pounds or euros or yen or whatnot. And then the values will be the rate of that particular currency. So we're gonna have this map and you'll see where we're gonna use the map here in a second. And then in parallel to that, we're gonna go out and get all the airline services. And then we're also gonna find all the airline flights. So for each airline, we're gonna find all the flights that map the parameters are passed in. So these two operations will go at the same time. We'll be looking up the rates in parallel to looking up all the flights. And let's take a look at the get rates call first. So get rates, as you can see, is gonna go ahead and make a web client. And that's going to go ahead and make a get request to the exchange microservice. It'll retrieve the result. It'll convert that into an exchange rate object. And then we use the subscribe on call here in order to make sure that that's gonna run in the background. So get rates will run in the background off of the calling thread. And then we will collect the results into a map. Likewise, we'll go and find all the flights. And then what we do here is really fun. So once the rates have been computed, once we know what the rates are, we then use the flat map many transforming operator. And we say for the, um, for the map here. So, so rates, if you think about this, rates ends up returning a mono to a map, where the map is the currencies and the rates that correspond to those as the key value pairs. So for that map of currencies and rates, we're then gonna take all the flights as they finish. And for each flight, we're gonna go through and if the currency of the flight is equal to the currency we're trying to convert to, no conversion is necessary. So in that case, we're just gonna return the flight and whatever price it's in as is, because of course it's, it's what it is, it's, it's in that currency. Otherwise, we're going to take the flight and we're going to change its price to be its current price times what the currency is uh, that it was, it was in. So we're gonna convert it. We're gonna get the from currency, which is what the flight was in and convert it to the to currency by multiplying it by the value for that currency that's in the map. So that's, that's the rate. So we're gonna multiply it by the rate, whatever the rate happens to be. And that will update the flight object. And then what we're gonna return here is a flux of flights whose prices have been updated if they needed to be updated. And again, notice that this whole thing is done asynchronously. So these calls are done asynchronously. These calls are all done asynchronously and everything comes back as a flux that has the updated prices. Yet another thing we're gonna do here is find best price. And this is a really fun method as well. This also shows off all kinds of cool reactive programming techniques. So what we do first is we use find flights. And what find flights is going to do is it's going to go ahead and um, call it to the method we just looked at a second ago. So that's gonna come back and return a flux of flight objects that have been put in the right currency. And then we're going to collect them using something called the cheapest price collector. And we're gonna take a look at that in a second. What that's gonna do is it's going to return a mono to a flux that will only emit the cheapest price trips. 
That's all it's going to emit. And this is the cheapest priced collector. You can see it implements the collector interface, which is going to take a stream of flights and it's going to have an accumulator. It's going to be a list of flight objects and it's going to return a flux of flights as the result. This is a very cool algorithm. It uses a single pass to compute the list of lowest prices. And it does that by keeping track of the minimum value that's been seen at any given point. Here's the supplier factor method. This just says we're going to use an array list to implement the underlying mutable result container. And here's the workhorse method. It's called an accumulator. This is called on every element that comes in. So what it does is for each flight, it's going to go ahead and take the current uh, list of lowest prices that we've been storing and the response that we have here. And it's going to go ahead and say, if the response for that particular flight is has got a price that's less than the current minimum, then we're going to clear out the lowest prices array and then add the new trip response to the lowest prices array. And then we're going to set the new minimum to whatever the price was for the trip response that we're looking at at this point. So that's kind of, you know, if, if there's a new low price, we reset that. If the price of the trip is equal to the current min, then add it to the lowest prices list. So if it's equal to the min, then we just add the trip price to the list of lowest prices. And if it's greater, we don't care because it couldn't be the lowest. So you can see what we're doing here is in a single pass by just keeping track of the min, we're building up this list. And when we're done, then we will simply take the list of lowest prices and use the from iterable factor method operator to convert it into a flux. So we've converted the list into a flux stream. So that's how we get the final result back. And then there's a few other things here that uh, this is the, the factory method to flux that's used to create a cheapest price collector. And you can see that that's what's used here. So we collect this thing up into a mono to a flux. And then we use flat map many to unwrap that mono and return the flux of flights that correspond to the trips that are the cheapest. So once again, you can hopefully get a good sense of, of how this is implemented. All entirely reactive, all entirely asynchronous. And then the last method I think we'll look at here, actually there are two more methods. One is called get rate. And what gate, what get rate does is it goes ahead and makes a get request to the exchange rate microservice. And it gives it the from currency and the to currency. We'll get back back as an exchange rate. I think we might've looked at this already. Um, and that, that runs in the background. And then here's get rates. And you can see that this is going to go ahead and uh, get back something where you just pass in the two currency and you get back the appropriate result, which will be a mono that contains the double exchange rate that corresponds to the two, two currency. So I think those are all the methods that are defined here in the flights service. So just to kind of step back from this and think about systematically what we've done, we defined a controller, a flight controller, that was kind of the app gateway for the, the actual client, like an Android app or a a uh, web web browser app that was using reactive JavaScript or whatnot. And then we went ahead and had that flight controller forward all the methods to the flight service. And the flight service then used a boatload of cool asynchronous programming mechanisms using Project Reactor models and fluxes to go and query all the background microservices in order to get them to do the things. And then this app gateway would assemble all the results back together and then return them back to the client wholly asynchronously, most often by using fluxes to get the results back. 